done. And to that uh, piece of shit lieutenant that's always uh, on his podcast, uh, bashing us, fuck him. <laughs>
you know, someone has to go to court or it's for uh, some dis disciplinary problem. Uh, so a lot of the, uh, delegates, that's our main focus is to uh, be there for a super uh, for a police officer in the time of uh, need when they're in trouble and also to relay information from uh, from our union, you know, any changes or things that are going on uh, within our union. And at what point? So you've been a, you've been a delegate for a little while now, right? You've been a delegate for for a while. So at what point did you decide? Like, why did you decide now that I'm going to go seek higher office? I mean, obviously it's coming up. This is a a, a dynamic time in the police department. You know, uh, Pat Lynch has been in charge of of the PBA for 23 years, going on 24 now. I mean, there hasn't been much movement into that executive board. Like, why? What What was your driving force? You think to be like, you know what? I'm gonna I'm, I want to get into the upper echelon of the PBA now. That that was actually one of the main reasons is because there hasn't been any change. There hasn't been, you know, any movement. And it's, it's on our platform a few decades back when uh, Pat Lynch actually ran, he actually ran on term limits. And I think somewhere along the lines when he got elected, uh, that was lost. And that's pretty much the main focus on why, uh, or the main reason why there hasn't been any movement. So Franklin and I, uh, when we started campaigning at the end of last year, that's been one of our main focuses, um, our main uh, points that we wanna push to the union once we're elected, is to implement some type of term limits to encourage other people or other delegates that they can move up and no one can monopolize a position for a few decades. Well, it's unfortunate, but the parameters of your job are usually for representation, as you said, when cops are in trouble, when they're in a pick, when they're in some type of jam on this job. But ultimately, what are the concerns that the cops come to you with? And what are the concerns today that you see? Because it ultimately... The argument that John and I have made in this podcast is that most of the members on the PBA board, as we speak, cannot relate to the modern day cop. Most of the board members have been part of this union prior to 2005. So they've never worn a body camera. They never had to distribute business cards. They didn't have to wear a taser. So it's a completely different dynamic. So what are the concerns that the cops come with to you today as we speak? Uh, just, you know, the day to day things as far as, uh, you know, standing on a post for exec, uh, an excessive amount of hours with, with, without a break, you know, uh, as far as uh, dealing with all this extra scrutiny from the public, as far as, uh, you know, with the cameras, uh, with CCRB, you know, we get a lot of pushback. Um, and it's, it's always, it's, it always seems to trickle down at the cop level. And our union is never anywhere to provide any type of comfort or, <laughs> Or any, in, they, what they don't do is alleviate any type of stress to uh, on the at the cop level moving forward to boost our morale on patrol. It's always just at the delegate level, and then that's it. And we're supposed to be that liaison between not just supervisors, but the executive board also within our union. But sadly, and as you see, whenever you turn on the TV, our executive board is nowhere to be found. I, th I think that's a fair assessment. You know, I, I do. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a very political guy. I pay attention to politics. Right. I always pay attention to uh, people that are in the Senate, that are in that are in city council. And I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, but I care the words that come out of your mouth. And Absolutely. I care what you do. And I and when I hear anti-police rhetoric being Absolutely. from these politicians, I, I pay closer attention to them. And I know that you were one of the guys that actually stood up against increasing the donations, yeah. uh, not uh, the political contributions, excuse me. You actually stood up and you voted against it. Could you just walk us through the, what you experienced by, you know, watching somebody ask a question and then saying, you know, what, I'd like a little bit more information. I don't think I feel comfortable at this time. What was that experience like? Well, you're not actually encouraged to ask questions because if, if you do, then, you know, you'll get videotaped and then you'll get ostracized like the other other delegates uh, did at that point. And, and and I'll be honest, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence as far as giving political do donations, you know. At our at our level, the only way that we can change a lot of our policies is through uh, politicians. So we need to encourage politicians that actually support cops, that actually like cops, but for some reason, I have, and, and 
I can't explain it. Our union loves supporting politicians that don't like cops. And we always stand up and we always clapping for it. But for the life of me, at the end of every meeting or in every chat group, everyone's you know questioning, why are we supporting this politician? Why are we sending money over here? But you know, at the end of the day, they're always clapping on sending money to Hoku and uh, individuals like that. You know, it's 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 beyond me. Listen, I commend you for for saying what you just said and uh, being completely honest and upfront with us, especially just coming on this podcast in particular. We've been met with resistance and reluctance, particularly members of the board from the PBA. So ultimately, when John and I started this podcast, the message was to be the catalyst for change. Civilian Complaint Review Board. The discipline matrix that was mostly my wheelhouse and of course in addition to that john was the catalyst to fight this forced vaccine mandate so it wasn't our initial it wasn't our initial step to get involved with the union but john had discovered that the union had provided a substantial amount of money to governor holcher which was complete ironic it, we felt it was a betrayal to the cops because she vetoes every bills that favors the cops She's anti-cop. Right, exactly. So at that point, that's when we started to get involved to say, hey, let's help the cops and let's look into, let's find out how the PBA board members are actually serving the best interests of the cops. So that's why I want to ask you this. Because John and I are under the impression that as a delegate, you kind of, you have to fall in line. If, in order, if you want to penetrate and become a trustee, a board member, that you have to fall in line. Yes. So how does someone that's willing to ask questions or actually change the narrative how do they penetrate and become a trustee, become part of that board, if you're not with Pat Lynch's administration? Well, the, the answer is you can't. You know, you have to fall in line. And, 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 and it's sad because you can only have one trustee and you can only have one financial secretary. And sometimes what they do is they'll, they'll go to some of these de uh, delegates, coddle them, and promise them in a few decades that they'll hand over their position to them. And then they'll do that to another delegate and another delegate and another delegate, but there's only one position. And they'll promise this, their position to a few delegates, a bunch of delegates, or they'll just you know take them out to like a steak dinner and that'll win them over. But what Franklin and I are doing is, this is the way that you're supposed to go and get these positions. And our bylaws, every four years, when positions come up for election, as long as you meet the criteria for that position, you campaign, and it's supposed to be an honest, an, an honest run. But that's not what has been going on with uh, Franklin, with Julio Gonzalez, and to an extent myself. But uh, some people aren't built for a campaign race. No, absolutely. I mean, you know, and and you know, I could knock. People, I, don't, I like again. I, I'm, I was never a union guy. I was never a PBA delegate. I was never a SBA delegate, LBA delegate. So it's easy for me to knock being from the outside. Like I don't know the That's whole okay. in and out of the union, but I do know that after 23 years, that it's it, there's too much power. It needs to be broken up. I mean, I wasn't. I, I you know, I think that Corey Grable is a cordial guy. I think that he's a nice guy. I don't think that he was the candidate. Obviously, clearly, he didn't have the fight in him to even submit the names. We don't even know how many signatures he got. And and this isn't to knock Corey Grable. No. It's more along the lines of when he was going to places and chiefs weren't letting him speak and sergeants weren't letting him speak. There's a problem. This union has way too much power. They've been ingrained. So change is good as far as you get a fresh set of eyes. And it's, it's scary to, to think what you're saying, you know, it's, it really is. And I, and I do, and I do agree. Like, I, I think that change is necessary, but also not only just change being necessary, the fact that you have boots on the ground currently, and you understand, you know, I, I hear from all my sources, Pat Hendry is a good cop and he's a yeah. good, he's a nice guy, but Pat Hendry doesn't even know how to fill out a DIR. He doesn't know how to use our voucher system. He no. doesn't know how to use any of the things. So how could he understand the psychology of the day-to-day -day cop? If, if you, when you are elected to the right. board, you. will you be the voice for guys to come to, 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 to actually, to, to be able to speak with, to understand what they are? What, 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 what do you want to, what do you want to tell 
the, the, the people in transit that are eligible to vote for you? What do you want to tell them about you? Absolutely. And, and, and you hit it right on the head. You know, he's, he's probably a nice guy, but, you know, no one knows him. And when Franklin and I started hitting these commands since the end of last year, you know, we started telling roll calls outside of Pat Lynch. They don't know anyone. And essentially, you're, you're voting for individuals you've never met. You don't know who they are. And, but one check for Lynch is, an, is a check for everyone associated with him. And we have to break ourselves out of that cycle, which is what Franklin and I were doing slowly. Trying, uh, we started out early at the end of last year and just educating members on this whole election process and letting them know that, listen, there are individuals out there that you've never met and they are controlling your union. They've never had a, a taser training. They've never had body worn camera training. You know, they've never been to CCRB. They've never had, you know, these, this whole uh, uh, social justice movement where cops are scrutinized for every little thing. They've never had, you know, bosses come up to them, you know, about the, you, you know, beard being too long or shoes are not shined or, or, or whatnot. You, you know, it's a different cop. And what we're encouraging cops to do is don't be afraid to support and vote for individuals that you actually know, that you actually met. Because these individuals, you know, you know, you know, we appreciate their service. Some of them have been up there for for twenty odd years, you know. But there's no accountability because they don't know the cop that's on uh, patrol right now. I want to thank you for that. That's outstanding. Everything that you're saying, and it solidifies what John and I have been saying on this podcast is that these cops. Well, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me backtrack and circle back. I don't even want to call them cops because they're not cops. They're employed by the NYPD, but the last time these guys were cops was 1999. So they have no idea what it is to be a cop. You said it. This is why John and I have been fighting. They have said, well, you guys are two retired lieutenants. What do you care? But you know what? Why don't they care? Because they don't care because they can't relate. They haven't worn a body camera. They didn't distribute business cards. They haven't been to CCRB. And when you compare CCRB prior to 2018 till now, there's a complete dichotomy and a complete change. I know. I lived it. I had eight sets of charges on my desk in a calendar year for fighting getting illegal firearms off the street. They didn't care about the forced vaccine. We lost the best cops that this department has ever had. Right now, guys are reapplying. The mayor is fighting. We're trying to recruit himself when people like John McCarry left because of the vaccine. The best that this job has ever seen. Uh, let's be honest. If these guys had to go put on a gun belt right now, they would not be part of the PBA and they would retire. I appreciate it. Solidifies exactly what I'm saying. No one. He might be a nice guy, but that doesn't cut the mustard. No one knows who Pat Andrew is. Where was he all these years? He never went to any roll calls to talk to anyone to get to know these cops. But now that he's running, he's handing out bottle openers. It solidifies exactly what John and I have been saying. He never took the opportunity to come on this podcast to provide his platform and let the cops actually get to know you. But in the end, they're going to vote for someone that's unopposed. So please tell us about the trials and tribulations and what it takes to get those signatures. What is the process to get those signatures to be in a position to run as you are doing such? And what's the difficulties and the obstacles that you had to deal with or someone potentially would have to deal with as a delegate who might want to be in your position? Uh, thanks for that question. Uh, actually, in order to uh, to get support to run, you need the support of your fellow dele uh, delegates. Uh, so Franklin and I, you know, we, we tried to get ahead of this, you know, as early as we could. And we used a little bit of misdirection because we anticipated things like this would, would happen. So we needed, you know, about 10 uh, signatures for Franklin and I. So w w without giving too much of how we, we ran our campaign, we, we were able to get our signatures. Uh, Corey and his team, you know, they needed about 20 signatures, but, you know, they they can pretty much get signatures from, you know, the entire delegate body, whereas Franklin and I, we had to get ours from from uh, from just transit. And I'll, I'll be honest, uh, I've never seen what happened to Franklin and uh, uh, Julio Gonzalez happen before. You know, a, a delegates pulling their names from a list, that just doesn't happen. It, it doesn't happen. And to give you an example, uh, the night that we actually submitted our petitions, everything was fine. Everything was good. 
the night that we submitted our petitions, we actually went to the Bronx and uh, to, to hit a roll call. So you mean to tell me the night, that night, everything was good. But the very next morning, a delegate mysteriously, uh, I forgot what district, district, uh, district 11, I think a delegate mysteriously uh, pulled her name from his list when at the delegate meeting, everything was good. He was, his, uh, his signatures were, were, were accounted for, everything was good. But the very next morning, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a, little, a little suspicious. And I, I hate to say it, but, you know, all parties that are complicit in this tampering with this election need to and will be held accountable. Because pulling your, your signature from a, from, a, from a petition, it doesn't happen. It doesn't mean that that's who you're voting for. All it's saying is you give that individual the right to run, just like in our command. And my command, in order for me to run for a delegate, I have to get a petition with uh, some signatures. And it's common for any cop to fill out everyone's petition. I'll fill out, you know, whoever's running for a position, you can fill out everyone's petition, but when it comes time to voting, you can choose one. So to pull your, your signatures at the last minute, this doesn't, this, this doesn't happen. So, I mean, just for everyone listening, what, what, what Derek is saying is that they had to submit these names to be, to be nominated and the right. names of the signatures that they got, these aren't people saying I'm going to vote for Derek Andrews. Right. They're just saying that Derek Andrews is eligible to be a, is eligible to be a candidate. Correct. So you should have had way more than ten signatures. It, there should have been four hundred signatures on Correct. there, right? And, and, and in my opinion, why would I block you out from a free and fair election? Correct. Why would I try to stifle your voice? You know, you know, I, I I'm not into cutting anybody's tongue out. I give my I give anybody a platform, and so does Eric. You know, we're not we're not in, about that. But so. They submit it to get nominated. The signatures are good. The next day, the tellers committee meets and they verify everything. And from that 24 hour period, from three o'clock in the afternoon that day to three o'clock the next day, uh, people are writing letters saying, hey, you know what? I want to pull my signature. Doesn't set. And if that's not election tampering, I don't know what it is. And I just read, uh, I just shared the GoFundMe page for. Uh, for Franklin as well. And he stated that he had a vacation pick. He picked his vacation to go out of the country uh, uh, to be around, the, uh, to move around so that he would be eligible to be at every PBA delegate meeting. And they moved the date to the day of his vacation. Correct. I mean, again, this is yeah. this intentional, intentional tampering. Um, and, and Derek, am I correct by, by saying that? If, if, I, if I sign your name, if I sign your name, if I'm a delegate and I say, I give you my signature and I say, yes. Um, and, and is that me giving you a vote? No, no. All it is is just you supporting my efforts to run because at the end of the day, we have to go to, and <laughs> earlier I said how uh, a lot of members don't know anyone outside of Pat Lynch, you know, our outgoing president. A lot of these other individuals, they're not built, they're not up to go to all of these commands and introduce themselves because they know that they'd have to face the music from a lot of policies that they've, you know, left on the table or a lot of policies that they put on the table for cops right now to uh, to have to deal with. So a lot, of, a lot of people aren't built to go out there and hit roll call after roll call. You have to see a bunch of faces that you've never seen before, go to a borough that you've never been to before. And Franklin and I didn't mind that. We had, which is why we started at, at the end of last year. And we wanted individuals to see our face so that once we're elected, they can actually hold us accountable. And they can say, oh, you know what, Andrews, when you ran, you said this, this, and this. Well, it's been two years, three years, you know, where, where's an update? You know, a lot of these individuals up there, they don't want members to hold them accountable. This is actually reflective of what I expected. I mean, John and I have faced uh, every time that we talk about the PBA and we discuss contracts and try to fight for the cops, their best interest, the disciplinary matrix, CCRB, which I think are the two biggest threats to the cops as we speak. Contracts are important, but I think the union has become very signal singular in just discussing contracts. There's so many other issues that we need to talk about. Morale, civilian complaint review board, discipline matrix, and vaccine is affecting morale and affecting the mass access exodus, starting with the vaccine, which 
which was the fire starter for this complete mass exist. But CCRB and Discipline Matrix is a it's a huge threat to every cop that's working right now. And it's my opinion that most of these board members, that they don't want to go to these roll calls and that they don't want to be held accountable because they don't know what this what the Discipline Matrix is. They don't know what it is to explain about the Civilian Complaint Review Board. And that's why they want to hide out in the dark. John says it all the time, right? Keep them in the dark, right? Treat them like mushrooms and feed them shit. And that's what's going on. They want to feed these cops shit. They don't want to tell them actually what's going on. They're not fighting for them. So I understand that the position that you're running with, running for right now is a, is a different position than running for PBA president. But I, I hope, I do hope you penetrate this and you get voted in. And then one day you can fight for some change. You and Franklin Valdez and of course Julio. And maybe one day one of you guys could become PBA president. So I like to ask you this because I asked Corey Grable with this and I have to be honest, I was disappointed with the answer. But at least we had an opportunity to ask. If you were the PBA president today, or at least if you were running as a candidate, what would be the first order of business that you would address? That's, that's, that's a good question. Uh, I'll be honest, the, the disciplinary matrix would be my first order of business because, you know, that's the main thing that is on every cop's mind putting on a uniform and going 98 is am i going to get in trouble for doing my job that's the main thing that's on every cop's mind is you know it so many years ago we would get in trouble for just taking police action now you can get in trouble just for standing on a corner you know cops are getting letters in the mail from ccrb investigations and they didn't even do anything so CCRB is allowed to do investigations on their own, even when there's no incident, you know. So that that disciplinary uh, disciplinary matrix that 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 has to be addressed because right now, you know, cops are out there on an the island by themselves. Derek, are you just? I know you. I know you. Were, you were a delegate, so I know you were getting a ton of a ton of. I don't want to say crap, but you were getting a ton of crap. I'm sure everyone. You know, I bypassed my delegate. I went right to the head because <laughs> I did because I knew it was out of your out of your realm. But yeah, the vaccine mandate and during that time, yeah, what did you see from the union and what were you dealing with? That's that that's 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 a oh that's a, that's a tough one because uh, we didn't get anything from our union. You know, at you know. At, just, just seeing cops get, you know, email after email and approaching that deadline when they have to, you know, uh, submit our RA, you know, we didn't get any uh, type of feedback from the union as far as what to do, as far as how to fill them out. Cops actually helped other cops, you know, you know, we actually, you know, okay, a cop from housing, you know, reached out to a cop from transit and then we all created like a small network of our, of, on our own on how to fill these forms out. Our union was nowhere to be found on this. Nowhere to be found on this. And then and 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 cops remember that. Well, we know that we, we've learned through different cases, especially John and I have been supporting Sal Greco. And Sal Greco was faced with complete adversity from the union. They turned their back on him. He was wrongfully terminated. And, and uh it's unfortunate but we see that the union is not standing by their people yet. It's a very lucrative position. It's a very cushy, right? It's a very cushy position. Absolutely. It's treated very well. Absolutely. I mean, Derek, let's be honest. These guys never want to leave. So it must be great. It must mm -hmm. be. I, I always say to myself, like, how good is this position really that nobody wants to leave? These guys are willing to die there. So <laughs> it, it, it's unbelievable. So, I mean, with that being said, if you are, if you were PBA president today, What would you? What changes would you make with the board members right now? If you had the same board members and you couldn't remove them, what changes would you make with them to make this better, or would you just remove them altogether? Uh, again, the number one thing that I would I would love to implement is, you know, something that the outgoing administration uh, or said that he would introduce uh, two decades ago, which is which is term limits. You know, term limits will be the first 
you know, when Franklin and I go around to these these uh, these commands, these roll calls, you know, we're all looking at tier three cops. You know, we're tier two. Tier three cops are about 85 plus percent of our membership. And we tell them we don't want to be doing this for the next 10 years, 20 years. We don't we, what we want to do is open the door so that tier three can come in and they can take over the union. That's what it should be. We should we shouldn't be taking over the union. I shouldn't be doing this forever. So I should have the door open so that someone can come along and they can do this for us. And I could sit on a sunny beach somewhere with the family and just, you know, uh, and enjoy the rest of the uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, the next part of my years. But I, we, we shouldn't be doing this for 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, term limits is something that's huge. And uh, frankly, I, I, I don't think when Pat Lynch introduced it and then forgot about it, I don't think any of the board members actually tried to uh, introduce this um, since they've been up there. Before John goes ahead, I just want to say thank you for that answer. I, I think it's completely honest. You seem honestly, you seem like you genuinely care, and I appreciate that. And that's what John and I were saying. I mean, the majority of this job is tier three. Eventually, we have to pass the torch. Absolutely. And we're not doing that right now. They're keeping this closed room, and they don't want anyone else to penetrate because they don't want to, and they don't want anyone to know really what goes on there. Yeah. That's what the problem is. Yeah. And if and uh, another thing, if uh, that Franklin actually mentioned is uh, is our bylaws. You know, if certain members actually had a copy of the bylaws, they would actually see how lucrative you know some of these positions can actually be, and why uh, some of these these board members would do anything to retain that power, you know, but um, uh, we might say have to save that for another show. So now I got two questions. I only had one, but now I have two. So here's my one question. What do you think should be term limits? Should it be two terms, three terms? And then my other thing is, if you're elected, will you fight to get everybody a copy of the bylaws? So Absolutely. Well, I, I, I'm a firm bully. I, I don't have all the answers. And when Frank and I go to these roll calls, I always say Frank and I, because you know we're, we we always ran independent, but we always supported each other, and you know you know that's my guy. So when we uh, go to these uh, commands, we always tell cops that we have some ideas, but the majority of our idea, I, our ideas that we'll take to the executive board is we're going to get it from our cops. That's how we're going to fix these uh you know these problems on patrol. So term limits, I, I'd say somewhere to start keep it at two two terms. And, you know, we can have discussions with, uh, amongst our members to see if, if that's too much, if that's too little, and then go from there. You know, I don't want to have the absolute say over everything. You know, if it's a union, we should have a collective decision on how things are done. And yes, everyone should have a copy of a bylaws. You know, if there are some delegates who don't have copies of the bylaws and, and, and that's done on purpose, you know. The by and the, it's a small it's a small pamphlet with you know just you know uh, some guidelines on on how delegates are supposed to you know you know our duties and and you know some of the uh, things like every it's, it's no secret that uh, say the president of the uh, the union gets a uh, you know double salary everyone out of the department knows that but it outlines what the vice president gets what the secretary gets the treasurer you know and so on and so on you know so absolutely I mean. What should we have to hide from our members? We're a union. But Eric, just let me go one more thing. I just want to make a comment about that because they're holding. So they're holding Franklin to the bylaws yeah. that he doesn't even know what they are. Yeah. So then right then and there, you can't even hold them to the bylaws because it should be made well aware to the membership. And, and, and I get what you're saying about the money. And that's yeah. probably true because for every committee, you get more money and stuff like that. I'm sure that's one of the reasons. But I think the bigger reason is that you don't have the bylaws, so you don't know how to come into power and yeah. you don't know how to run. Absolutely. They're not trying to empower their membership. That Absolutely. is sinister. I didn't even realize that. That is yeah. sinister. So I know you guys are listening. So that's going to change. <laughs> that's going to change. I guarantee that's going to change. That is going to change. Absolutely. Sorry, Eric. Yeah, yeah. No, no, dude. Don't be sorry at all. I'm actually, honestly, I think that was a fantastic point. I'm actually so glad that you actually drilled down on that point. That's exactly true. I was thinking the same thing. Like, yeah, there's a lot of great information to know, I mean, how lucrative it is, 
But ultimately, they don't want anyone to know the rules to actually get into a position of power to remove these guys. And that's why I say it must be pretty damn good to be a BBA president. Maybe we shouldn't have been promoted and making a sergeant <laughs> lieutenant. I should have just went to the PBA. It sounds like that's the way to go. I mean, maybe I should ask all these guys that make the fake accounts. I mean, how good is it? I mean, I, 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 I'm sorry. I, I tell all the members no. that also, of course, this is a this is a supervisor's job. So I tell all the guys, all the tier uh, three guys um, and and gals. I always tell them, you know, go get promoted because it's great if if you know I'm at a scene and a cop gets jammed up to see you know a colleague and they're in a a, a position of, of of supervision. You know, go out there and become supervisors. But if you don't go that route, there's nothing wrong with becoming uh you know a, a delegate or a board member within your union. Right. If you could actually become one, that's the problem. And, yeah. and, and the reality is, I mean, from what we see in this short amount of time, I mean, John and I really kicked this thing off in October. And when John presented it to me, he said, wow, look at this. Look at the money that they donated to Governor Hulsh. He's like, you think, you think we should talk about this? I said, absolutely. I mean, I thought the cops would see jump on the bandwagon. Wow, look at this betrayal. Yeah. But they're so feeble-minded that, they, you know, they just – they're starving. They're desperate. Yes. I think they suffer from the Stockholm syndrome. They got a they got a contract, and oh, I got money, so I, I'm blindsided by it. Exactly. But exactly what you said. So these bylaws that haven't been read yet. What about the contract? We haven't read that either. Did you get an actual depictive information on this contract? Other than the contract, are there any changes that you can speak of? Are there changes to the sick policy? Are there changes to vacation? Are there changes to the amount of tours that you have to work before you incur time and a half? Is there anything you can tell us about this contract? Because we know nothing, and 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 we don't know. Uh, we don't know much, also. And that's another <laughs> thing. I'll, I'll be honest. That's that's what some of these members at these roll calls ask us. That you know, shouldn't they get a copy of the contract? And this isn't something that Franklin and I are are putting out there. Like a lot of the members at these roll calls are saying, you know, we're union members. We should get a copy of our contract and. They have a point, you know, and they vote. They voted yeah. on a contract. <laughs> that see. That's that was my whole thing. You're just taking these guys word for it when the, everything they said out of their mouth. W w let me let me ask you, though, be, besides not seeing the contract from the information you gathered and the time that you waited to get to get brought up to date, what Besides, we didn't we didn't see it, so we don't know the in or outs of that contract, which is a nut, which is abysmal. Again, that's not representation of me. That is not transparency. I'm again. I have a million questions that weren't answered about that contract, and they still haven't been, which leads me to believe that we were correct, Eric, on on what we were talking about. But what were your thoughts overall on the contract negotiations and the contract itself? Well. What Franklin and I, what we tell the members is that, you know, I don't want to sound like we're, we were against the contract. We just tell members that you deserve this contract. Don't be happy about this contract because it was ours from the beginning. It's just that we just took years to receive it. You know, So I'm glad that cops actually got their money. We deserve that, you know. But we should hold our union accountable for you know what took them so long because we're getting the same numbers that was offered to us a few years ago. So, and then everything else that came along with it, you know, as far as like signing on to the the MLC, you know, there's a lot of questions about that that our members ask, and we can't answer because we weren't even told, you know, in our meetings we're avoiding everything that the MLC uh, stands for, but then at the at the last minute, we're, we're we're told that we're signing on into it. So, uh, you know, a lot of these questions, a lot of, uh, you know, haven't been answered, and our membership, you know, they're coming to the delegates with with uh, questions that we can't answer. You know, yeah, I think this is totally absurd to me. This is like one of those scams where you go buy a car and they tell you, "Listen, uh, this car, they buy this BMW, it's great. We're going to give you four oil changes every year on the house." The tires, we're going to take care of the tires, and then you go for your first oil change. Like, what are you talking about? Absolutely. There's no oil changes here. I mean, what exactly is in this contract? I mean, we're told that the modern chart information is in the chart. How is the pilot program in the contract? Can, can you speak to that? It's, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I, I think they're starting it oh, over, in, uh, over in the Bronx now. Uh, but pilot program, we've been doing 12 hour tours, 13 hour tours for almost, 
the better part of two years now. So, I, I, I mean, if, it, it's a, if it's a pilot program, we've been doing that already. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, you know, I'll be honest. And, and, and as, as, it's, it's just a lot that the members don't know. And as far as like, uh, along with this contract, they, they're trying to shove everything down cops throat to, you know, dangle the carrot, which is retro. They're trying to dangle that uh, around us. And then now they're trying to sell the whole, um, okay, uh, the Hokel now is, 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 you know, putting in a provision so you can take pension loans. And it's like, okay, if, if cops are getting a retro, which, which is our money, the money that we should have had, the last thing you want to do is tell them to take a pension loan that when we're getting a retro right now, you, you, you know, so it's like we're, our, our cops just, we're, we're, we're missing some, some decent representation, you know, and it's just, it's just been a long time for, for some change. You know, and it sounds it sounds corny, it sounds cheesy. And I, I tell, and I've been to Franklin's Command also. I've been to every district in the in, in the city. And we tell these tell the uh, tell the roll calls, like we we don't do we only here because members want us here. You know, and and this is not personal. This is this is if you don't want us here, we don't you don't want us to be our delegate. You can easily vote someone out. You know, so we're not doing this. We're we're doing this because we're this is we 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 generally feel you know what our members feel on patrol, our members feel in roll call, we're just in a position to actually say something. And a lot of uh, delegates and, and individuals at that higher uh, um, executive board, they don't say anything. Yeah, because it's a, it's a mafia mentality, you know? Yeah. I, I, I actually heard um, them selling that it was a great thing about the, the pension loans. Me and Eric always go back and forth about the pension loan. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna get into that. But it's a no cost bill. It should have never been vetoed in the first place. Yeah. And it cost nothing to let you guys get access to your own money. Now, I agree with you. I want to take a loan. Derek has something else to say about that. No, but no. And or ordinarily, yes. But, but I, you know, you know, don't take the loan if, you know, uh, you know, you're going to get a retro in, a, in, a, in about a uh, month or so. You're going to get a big retro. So, you know, taking a loan should be the last thing on your mind if you're going to get the retro. But ordinarily, the, the loan is, is beneficial to all our cops. It's, you know, you know, a lot of people don't have, you know, 40, 50 grand lying around to, to buy a house or, 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 or get out of debt or something like that. You know, so it, 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 you, you, you handcuff cops, you, you, you know, for these policies that could actually help us. And, and it's just not good. Yeah, but, you know, and, and, and that's my whole thing is like this woman supporting bail reform. Yeah. She's supporting shutting down Rikers. She's supporting all this crazy anti-cop legislation, pulling qualified immunity from us. And we're giving her money. And we're like, oh, well, now she just let you take a loan. Like, it's, it was ridiculous that you couldn't in the first place. It was like, well, it's my money anyway. No, I, I could grab my money. So they sold yeah. it that way. And then today, you know, someone sent me a bill by Senator Mike Uranus, I think his name is, G-I-N-R-I-S. And... Mm -hmm. So I was it Uranus or Uranus? Yeah, it's on, yeah, it should be Uranus. It honestly should be because the bill is basically stripping. Um, it's stripping the right to self defense for civilians, right? So then I start looking at this guy. I go on his Twitter. I type in "cop." I look in. I look at his Twitter. It's all anti cop stuff. In 2020, he actually says, "I'm not taking any money from police packs." anymore and anyone that gives me the money i'm donating it to people's bail but guess who gave him money in 2022 this oh. guy hates police don't say it senator and this is the thing it's like we're working against ourselves by these political donations yes. you know if, if I, I again i don't care if the guy's a democrat you got a guy yeah. like Bob holden who overwhelmingly supports the police Joanna Ariola, who overwhelmingly supports the police. Now, there's some social issues I disagree with them on, but mm -hmm. overall, public safety, we're all in line, you know? And we're, we're not giving it to them. We're giving it to the far left wackos. Um, scary, real scary. I, yes, it is. I, I, it's, and, and again, I hate to say it, you know, you know, Frank and I, it's like, you know, we're the only ones out there that's preaching, um, Hey, can, can, can we hold these guys accountable? Because at roll calls, our members are looking at us like saying, oh, hey, what are we doing? You know, who are we voting for? Who are we supporting? You know, why are we sending these individuals money? And when we go up to these, uh, to the executive board, man, they're just, uh, it's a democratic city. What are we going to do? You know, and, and I, 
I agree with you. I don't. I'm not concerned about your politics about you know Democrats and Republican, but do you support cops? That's it. Why are you giving our money to people that just don't support us? So I say right now, everyone that's in the union right now, throw them all out. We need to start over. We need to start from scratch, and we need to wipe the slate clean. These guys got so much dirt on them; it's absolutely ridiculous. They betrayed their own people. Yeah. First of all, you ask me, they're a bunch of cheesy salesmen. Yeah. I would not go to a car dealership right now and buy a car. And if I spoke to the car, the the car salesman and said, "Listen, tell me about this car," and he can't tell me anything about it other than, "Hey, there's a cool car, kid. Buy this car." Well, why? Tell me why this is a good car. I don't know. Don't worry about it. It's good. Well, that's what the PBA guys what they tell the cops right now. They show up to these roll calls for a three to five minute conversation. They don't tell them anything of substance or anything of detail. Hand out a couple of bottle bottle openers and a couple of challenge coins and take a picture. Hey, kid, hold up this sign. That's it. They, I mean, that's you, all they're doing. It's a big show. It's a big circus. Yeah. And you know what? They treat the cops like they're a bunch of clowns and they're going along with it. It's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It's a big show. We need to start over. Like you said, yeah. we need people like you. We need people like Franklin. We need people like Julio that actually care about the cops. And you know what? The fact that you guys really don't know what goes on in the union because they won't let you, these are the guys I want because not knowing and you still want to be there, that says a lot about you because these guys want to be there because it's about self-preservation. These guys are drive, they're probably driving Maseratis right now you know, as yeah. PBA That's board funny. members while the cops were starving and suffering and they finally could take a loan because right now they're going to rob yeah. Peter to pay Paul. They're yeah. getting this retro and as soon as it comes in their hands, it's going to be out of their hands to pay for credit card debt, to pay Absolutely. for things on their house. There's no Absolutely. way that they were able to keep up with inflation. Nope. It's it's exactly what's going on. And they're blindsided by it. And I like what you said. I'm not going to forget what you said, Derek. I really appreciate what you said. This contract, it's it, it's not like it's a privilege. They deserve it. They have a yeah. right to get a contract. But the cops, like I said, they're suffering for the Stockholm Syndrome. Well, Absolutely. oh wow, we got a contract. You know, we should we should put Patlidge on a throne. Yeah. He said, he, he should have did what you just said. They should have got the contract years ago. Absolutely. Why didn't they cut it almost six years later? So, you know what, frankly, with that, I, I, I want to say I have nothing but respect and admiration for you. So, I appreciate I, that. I, going along now, I, I, if you were a cop right now, and, and if you don't want to say it, that's fine. But if you had to vote, would you vote for Corey Grable? Would you vote for Team Hendry? Or would you not vote at all? It's another good question. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but it's important for the cops at all. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. A lot of, oh, well, Team Hendry, Hendry hasn't even put himself out there, so we don't know what he stands for. But since he stands with Lynch and all of Lynch's policies, you know, we can't support him. You know, you know, Corey at least agrees or sat down with Franklin and I on creating some different policies, on addressing things like term limits, you know, so change is actually needed you know but Corey's is going to have to have some uh or answer some questions on like you said earlier about his petition about showing his petition about how come everyone in his team even those that actually had signatures that were eligible to run and why they didn't so accountability and transparency are what franklin and i We've been running on since the end of last year, and this goes for everyone, and his team is included. I think I'm, I'm right with you, bro, because I'm telling you right now, if it was me, I wouldn't check a box other than other than you three guys. Yeah. I'll tell you right now, I would boycott the whole thing except for you three guys, and that's, that's it. And whoever lands, I could care less because no, they're not supporting me. They're not going to get my name. They're not going to get my check. I'm not in it. That's just my personal opinion. That's my personal opinion because, like you said, there's a lot, a lot of questions surrounding the whole thing, yeah. the way this went down. And frankly, uh, I'm sorry, Franklin. Derek, correct me if I'm wrong. You and Franklin started running before Corey Grable, Grable even announced, right? So, like, you guys were like two insurgents, and he correct. came to you. Am I am I right on that? Correct. Uh, well. Well, we all we all know each other from you know we're uh, Brooklyn Transit. Corey's former uh, former Brooklyn, uh, yeah. but yes, we we started before Corey. We actually came out with Corey, um, uh, but before Corey, and we 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 tried to give Corey a few pointers, and and we tried to help him out, you know, going 
this through this whole election process. But Franklin and I, we weren't on Corey's team. And, you know, that's something that we had to explain to every district, every borough that, that we went. We supported Corey because, excuse me, we think everyone should have the opportunity to run. And any, any brother or sister in transit, if they want to run for a trustee or financial secretary or any position, you know, we're going to support you. You know, we're, we're, we'll at least give you that opportunity and let the members members decide. So yeah, Corey didn't choose Franklin and uh, myself on his team, you know, but we still wanted to support him to run. He chose other members on it, you know, on his team. And, uh, you know, at this previous meeting, only Julio Gonzalez, Franklin Valdez and myself were the only ones that put forth petitions. I, I, I think uh, everything that you're saying is it comes from honesty. I think it comes from the heart. I appreciate it. Is there anything else about the union that that the cops should know that affects them on a daily basis, other than what we discussed so far? No, no. I think I think uh, what well, uh, you two do a great job. Um, <laughs> that's why I, no, I, I, honestly, we at the, at the cop level uh, or at the street level, we 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 honestly we appreciate you know. Uh, you know what you say because you, you both say what the average cop can't say. You know we're so heavily scrutinized on everything, and and you know we're 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 constantly just get you you know looking over our shoulder, not from criminals, but from you know whether it's the job or you you know the union uh, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to a certain extent. So hearing two people that were actually doing what we were doing and speaking out for us. You know, uh, every every cop is always looking at social media to see what you're going to say next, and it 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 it, it makes them feel good about themselves. Wow, right. uh, we appreciate it. It's a pleasure doing it. It's therapeutic for John and I being in this position to talk about what's going on in the job, to be supportive, to actually expose lies, the legislation, the political movement that's completely anti rhetoric and anti sentiment towards the police. And again, we get these questions constantly and bombarded with attacks. Why do we care? Yeah. Why we cared when we were on the job? Absolutely. And now we continue to care, but now we could, could actually be a voice from outside to help within. We care because John and I both agree that no matter what, people say, "Ah, you were bosses. You weren't cops." Yeah. Wrong. And I—that's the message to every cop out there, right? We were cops that led other cops. Yes. You can call—I don't care if you could call me lieutenant. You could have gave it another name. You could have called it. Cop leader. I don't care what it was. Yeah, it was cops leading other cops. I, I said all the time, we were cops first. Absolutely, led other cops. I was a mentor to them. I was a father to, to them, a brother, a family member. I still care about them. They still call me. I'm still in contact with them because we care. Absolutely. That's all we I want. That. We just want the PBA board to care. That's it. And if if they did care, then I would then there would be balance, and I would say, you know what. These guys deserve the, the, the cushy job that they get. They deserve the extra financials that they get. But we're not seeing that. No. We're just seeing, you know, like you said, who are these guys? Yeah. No one knows who they are. Poof. Yeah. This guy, Pat Hendry, emerges. We never even I I listen, I spent almost 20 years on the job. I was on the street every day. It's my entire time in the field. I never saw this guy. I have no idea where, where he crawled out from. Absolutely. I, I, I have any of these guys. Some of them I do know. John, I know they're from Staten Island, and yeah. I hope they're not the ones giving us the fake attacks because they know us. <laughs> but you know what? That's fine. It gives us a good laugh. I get to show my wife and my friends, look at this idiot. Look what they're saying about us. It's pretty funny. I mean, they keep calling John a bull prick. <laughs> they say, you know, that they're going to they're gonna come after me. Like, really? You didn't funny. come after me then. You're going to come after me now? So, That's you know what? I, I do appreciate the laugh. So, it, it keeps us entertained. Thank you. <laughs> They say that we're putting out misinf if misinformation, right? Yeah. So if you could just set the record for us. Are we putting out misinformation? Not that I've seen. Not that I've heard. No. I appreciate it. And we appreciate you. I promise you. That's why That's why I told you. It's, uh, you know what? Your name is still good within the ranks. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Derek, um, are you running against an incumbent? 
Is, 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 is he currently in, in the status of a transit financial secretary? He's not. But um, if you look at the Team Hendry uh, webpage, they're actually promoting him, promoting him that he is, that he is the current uh, financial secretary. And that's not true. There is there's a lot of confusion going on uh, because of this whole mess. Uh, but there is still an election going on, you know, in a few days, transit members will get their, they will receive their ballots and they'll have, uh, they'll have until June 9th uh, to cast their ballots for the transit financial secretary. So it's only myself and one other individual, you know, that's it. Because of this whole nonsense, all members have been robbed of their right to vote in this election. So transit is the only bureau that's going to be voting in this election. And that's because of you guys, because you got you guys took the abuse for a year. You wow. saw those meetings. Yeah. I heard those meetings, man. It sounds like Lord of the Flies. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I give you guys a lot of credit for keeping your composure and going through it. Even even Team Grable, I give them a ton of credit even for just that aspect of it. I, like I said, I'm, I, I have a lot of questions about what transpired after, but like at least you have given your members a vote. Um, what what do you what do you want to say to to the the guys who are going to receive a ballot? What why should they vote for Derek Andrews? Well, to everyone that that's receiving a ballot, I just want to say that your only option, my opponent, nothing against the guy, except he's standing with those who kept you starving for six years. So if you don't have any problem with Pat Lynch or his crew, you can vote for my opponent. But all that energy, all those messages from the group chats and that's going on in your commands and, and, and all, that, all those feelings about whether it's the COVID mandates, whether it's the, the contract, the way the contracts went down. And if you have a problem with all that, guess what? So do I, and so do Franklin. You know, there's a misconception that a lot of delegates are going along with everything uh, that the union puts out there, and that's not true. We have a problem with that. We have a problem with the ideas, the resources that the union has not brought on to the members. You know, a big thing is, and, and it, a, a big morale booster would be, aside from the, the disciplinary matrix, is to do something at the community level. Every time you turn on the TV, there's always somebody bashing cops. There's always some uh, politician or some activist bashing cops. And if our union members, uh, our executive board members, they want to be politicians, you know, how about you go out there and if not debate, have a conversation with these individuals that are always talking bad about us. You know, that's that's if you're going to put on a suit and have a fancy car on our dollar, that's that's the least that you can do, you know. So Franklin and I, like we've told every member in every district in every borough, we've told everyone we have a few ideas. The rest we'll get from you. I think that's a, an impressive response. I think you said exactly what we need to hear. So and I'm impressed also because it's not how you start. It's how you finish. And you finished with a great answer. Oh, thank you. You just said exactly what we need to hear. In order to have change with the PBA to actually get support in the best interest of the cops right now, we need to have a deviate from the Pat Lynch administration. And you and Franklin and Julio are that deviation. And you just said it. Most of the delegates, the majority of the delegates are going on. They're going along with Pat Lynch's administration because they want to penetrate the board and they want to have a career with the PBA. And you guys actually oppose that you're the opposition and you're still in in, in the running yeah. so for that i applaud you i love your statement thank you for coming on here i think it's extremely impressive i support you i support franklin i support julio i know john does as well uh, you showed a lot of courage for coming on here and I, I appreciate uh everything that you have to offer and i'm saying it right now to the cops that are out there right now new york city police department you know me i was out there on the streets i'm telling you both with derek andrews Support Franklin that does support Julio. These guys want change. You yeah. need a change. If you like, I, I love the part that you said before 
You're going to have to watch this again and play that back. If you want to starve again for six years, vote, this, vote for Team Hendry, vote for, vote for Derek Andrews' opposition, and that's what you're going to get. Absolutely. Thank you, brother. Likewise. I agree 100%. You have my support 100%. I think exactly like I said. As of right now, if you're the only person on the ballot and it remains that way, there's only one There's only one name that should be checked. That's Derek Andrews, 100%. If, 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 if it's in God's will and Franklin and Julio get to right this injustice that's been done to them and this election tampering, then it, check the box for them too as well. Absolutely. You know, and, and that's why I support them. I like you know the union. What what the PBA doesn't understand, and 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 I'm talking to the PBA right now, the the, the people that are there right now. What you guys don't understand is, you got to look at it from my shoes. You got to look at it from Eric's shoes. Everything that we talk about when it becomes to the anti police rhetoric, you agree with. Yep. I know. I know that they did. I know yep. that they agree with everything that I'm saying. I know they're like, oh yeah, that's great, that's right, that's true, until it comes to your own bullshit and your own yes. hypocrisy. And I'm not saying, hey, let's go string these guys up on a tree. I'm saying let's do better. And so is Eric. And Absolutely. you know what? And and what do we get for it? We get nothing but attack. And even we'll get attacked by giving you a platform to come on and speak your mind, right? To come on and tell tell everybody who you are. And that's just who we are. We we had we let. We let cop watch come on. You know yes, what I mean? That, guy, that guy's a, an ambulance chaser, you know, yes. just just so everybody could see what he's really about and how he maneuvers, you know. Absolutely. Um, and, and and that's my biggest problem. And I really do. I think it's time for change. I really do. There's only one way you got to break through. you got to have new faces in there. If not, it's a landlock. Yep. I'm sorry to say to my friends that are delegates out there. You know, I'm, I'm really debating whether you are my friend or not, because yeah. you know, I've heard a lot of the things that have been said about me and, you know, you know, it's not true. And the fact that you were unwilling to stand up in the fray like Derek, like Franklin, like Julio, because that's what they did. They put themselves on an island and they begin nothing but abused by all of you, the cheers and the claps. It's disgusting. Derek, you have uh, my utmost support. If you need anything, please let us know. Appreciate that. Thank you, John. Thank Absolutely. You. Oh, thank you, brother. It's been a pleasure to meet you. I also, you know, I, I, I want to add, I'm sure tomorrow, coincidentally, that John and I will get numerous attacks in regards to this interview, which is a shame. And I want to say this. I'm confident you will win. Okay. I, 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 and I, I believe that. You always have to have that ideology. That has to be the mindset. I'm going Absolutely. to win. But Absolutely. I tell you what, I'm, Derek, I'm proud of you. And, and I'll tell you this. I, I'm a firm believer that the movement that John and I are doing, along with yourself and Franklin and Julio and some other supporters that we have out there, the shift is growing. Yeah. I'm confident you're going to win. But by God, if you don't, you still made some change. There will be changes made. We are changing the narrative. We've exposed the nomenclature of the PBA. Cops yeah. will start asking questions. Where's That's my true. bylaws? Right? Why don't I know what's going on with this contract? Will we have to wait the next six years for another contract? Does anyone care about this CISPA matrix? Does anyone care that Absolutely. that Officer Davis, I, I, I forgot the other officer, that were cleared by the NYPD, cleared by the DA's office, and they're fighting for the job right now from CCRB? Mm -hmm. The PBA should be screaming right now that these two cops are fighting for their lives. They're fighting for the job from the Civilian Complaint Review Board that is completely overzealous, yes. right? And yet, run by an executive director, Jonathan Dosh, who's had numerous sexual allegations towards him, but no one speaks about that. Nothing. And all we do is target the cops. Yep. Where is the PBA not solidifying the hypocrisy? Absolutely. Derek, I applaud you, brother. Honestly, you're doing a great job. You uh, are making a change. Win or lose, you won. Uh, There's value you. in this. Appreciate that. Seriously. Thank you. Derek, before we sign off, is there anything that we that we missed? Anything you want to go over? Anything on your platform? Or, you know, we'll leave you with the last words. You know? uh, last words. I just want to, uh, you know, thank all the members for allowing Frank and I to come into the district. Uh, unfortunately, this is just going to be a transit uh, election at the moment. So I am speaking to uh, uh, transit members. And that energy that you gave Frank and I when we were at your roll calls, Please do me a favor, reach out to Franklin because he needs our support right now. Him and his family. Thank you. All right, everybody. Everybody, thanks for tuning in. 
We'll be right back at you to find us on Filter, baby.